Echo asks, <clears throat> data-driven science can sound like it's questioning dogma, which is incompatible with hypothesis. Please clarify the difference between data and patterns and what constitutes a hypothesis. Um, a hypothesis is a potential explanation for a pattern that makes unique predictions enough to establish whether it is or is not causal. That is maybe that might be able to be refined slightly, but it's it's a pretty good first pass at, at a definition. The issue about data is that data is collected properly done. Science involves the collection of data to test a hypothesis. Patterns exist before this, and you can observe a pattern, but it is not data until you say what experiment you are running and therefore what the various results might mean, right? You lay out that protocol, and then at that point, the observations, which would otherwise be just observations, become data, but in light of an experiment, natural or otherwise. Right. Data reveal or fail to reveal patterns, um, but much of what is masquerading as data aren't data. So, um, you know, the fact that data-driven science can sound like it's questioning dogma, um, obviously they can, they, you know, the, the PR people who are actually deciding how it is that we will be exposed to ideas and um, told what to think, uh, who are not actually the scientists, can make anything sound like anything. And yeah, data-driven, data that's, a, that's a good one. That's better than follow the science, frankly. It's been around for longer, and I have heard many, many scientists spout, oh, well, we're going to be data-driven now. Like, yeah, that's going to be the death of your science then. You know, that's, that's, that's not how it's, that's just not how it's done. Well, it, it is, note the following pattern. You've got three examples that will show you what's going on. You've got data-driven, peer-reviewed, evidence-based, Okay. In all three yeah, of these, I have less of a sense of what they even mean by evidence base. Like it's, it, you're right. They're all three of those things. Like uh, you actually don't know what any of that means. But I don't even know what they think they mean when they say evidence. Well, the scary thing about evidence base, I recently encountered this, um, in part based on what uh, Alex, Alex Alexander Marinos had unearthed. But I always assumed evidence based medicine meant the obvious, which just means that I want what my doctor prescribes to be logically sound in light of what they've observed, right? Like there's been safety testing? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm serious. I know that sounds like a joke. Because like the, there's been safety testing, like the... It deals with the it condition deals with that the it's condition supposed to deal with. We've, you know, eliminated the obvious causal possibilities that would uh, cause something else to be the correct prescription, whatever. It just sounds like, you know, but that's, but I mean, non dummy this is my, medicine, but this is my problem with it. It's like, it, it includes all of those things, which means there's no, there's no there. there. No, no, it's no, no. Big. There's very definitely a there there. And that's the point is that evidence-based medicine is a particular orientation that is not, it, it is not a natural fit for that label. Right. So I am, it? I am, hold on. I am for revere, uh, review by peers in science. Right. Right. Um, I am for science that is directly tested by empiricism, mm -hmm. right? Which means you're going to have a data set. Right, and I am yeah. definitely in favor of doctors who thoroughly understand uh, the evidence and base their medical treatments on it. Mm -hmm. I am not in favor of evidence-based medicine. I am not in favor of data-driven science, and I am not in favor of peer review because in each of these cases, that label is a cloak that hides something that is not the natural expectation of what you will find. The label on the box does not match the contents. In the case of peer review, what is hidden is a system of perverse incentives and very significantly uh, anonymity, right? Where your competitors can use peer review to silence you. Data driven is not the same thing as, yes, if that better match up with what we find empirically in nature. What it means is actually data first, when in fact hypo hypothesis needs to come first after observation, which is not data, right? Evidence-based medicine is a particular obsession with various 
uh, priorities like um, randomized controlled trials above clinical experience. And randomized controlled trials are something that, yes, a beautifully designed randomized controlled trial that is then well run is capable. It has one major advantage, which is that it can detect subtle processes more effectively than something cruder than that. But it is also easily and, and gamed. Subtle might mean rare, and it might mean low level. It means it is more sensitive, right? So a right, but sensitive to what? So it could be about numbers. It could be about about degree. Right. It could be about amount. It could be about any of those things. Mm -hmm. And the point is, is it good to be able to detect subtle processes? Yep, that's great. But yeah. The point is it comes at the other end of a trade-off, which is that it's easy to do it badly, and even worse, it's easy to game. You can mm -hmm. create a randomized controlled trial that will uh, seem to suggest no efficacy where in fact you've got a drug that is effective, mm -hmm. right? So at the very least, if your clinical experience doesn't match your randomized controlled trials, then you wanna figure out why. And uh, evidence-based medicine doesn't do that. It just says, oh, this is the gold standard. So anyway, the yeah. um, the euphemisms are um, they are cloaks, and they are cloaks for things that have very profound consequences on what we come to believe is true. That are non scientific. They are these are anti scientific cloaks that hide. And in fact, it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, where um, you know something we have a CDC that is doing the opposite of what a CDC should do, but it prevents us from creating a CDC that does the right thing because we've already got a CDC, right? It takes up the niche space and prevents the right thing from emerging. I mean, and they even like, <clears throat> this 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 got almost revealed presumably uh, without them wanting it to be with regard to VAERS, where you know a lot of people were already <laughs> worried about VAERS, right? And like a lot of us who are now very concerned about VAERS, I, I'd never heard of it, right? right? It, it never occurred to me like, I assumed there must be something doing that job, but I had never given it any explicit thought at all. And at the point that it's revealed that VAERS um, cannot, in its current state, do anything like what it's supposed to do, um, somehow the argument is uh, simultaneously, um, no, you can't trust what's in that because it's not doing a very good job. And well, we already have a system and it's called VAERS and therefore we don't need anything better. Like somehow they're making both of those arguments at the same time, right? Which well, is remarkable. It, it, it's right? a classic. And, 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 and you could make the same argument for the CDC, for the executive branch of the United States government, for like you know all of these things at this point, right? Just complete, complete failure mode. It's it's heads I win, tails you lose. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all the way because yeah. uh, in each of these cases, they you know it's double standards. R frankly, yeah. any yeah. standard that was evenly applied would have some positive effect, right? Any standard, but the fact is, um, if it's an no. actual, no, no, <laughs> any standard, take a high standard or a low standard. If you apply it evenly across the board so that the, you know, the vaccines and the competitors with the vaccines are exposed to the same thing, you will get some benefit out of a, out of an evenly applied standard. What happens guess, though, is you get- I guess you're using standard in some precise way that I don't like a it. threshold of efficacy, right? If you okay, want to declare, I feel like it doesn't matter. Like, there's just a lot of ways, a lot of things you could call a standard, which would be explicitly um, negative. But a threshold, any any standard that was an actual threshold for efficacy, yes, an actual objective standard that was simply evenly applied, yes. would give you some sort of a filter for yes. good over bad. Yes. And the fact is, what we get is, oh, I'm selling X the standard for efficacy will be zero, <laughs> right? <laughs> it will be what? Oh, we didn't say that out loud. Right. So, you know, oh, it's mm -hmm. highly efficacious. How efficacious? Well, zero, but you know, efficacious, mm -hmm. right? So the, I feel better. It's the double standard that does it is yeah. that, you know, they, they create impossible standards for their competitors and no standard at all for themselves. And then lo and behold, the patient is screwed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So and anyway, I like that.